thank you so much for inviting us to come and have a look at this fantastic Masonic Temple as part of Retford Heritage Open Day. Now, there's so much symbolism and beautiful objects in this room that my eyes are just drawn to, but obviously the first thing visitors would notice is this amazing chequered floor. Can you tell us some of the symbolism behind the floor? I certainly can. Yeah, uh, the, the whole temple is allegedly laid out uh, in the same way that um, King Solomon's temple is laid out, according to the Old Testament, including um, the black and white tiled floor, which is what this represents. Now, as far as Freemasons are concerned, it represents several things, night and day, good and evil, the ups and downs right. of everyday life. And you will excuse me if I get a little bit upset at this point, because <clears throat> it goes like this. If you are, if I stand on a black square and I'm having a bad day, I'm surrounded by white squares. The white squares represent my brethren, my fellow Masons, who are there to support me. If I'm having a good day, I'm surrounded by black squares. And that represents the fact that it's there to remind us that there is evil all around and that we must tread carefully. Oh, wow. That's really emotional. Thanks for sharing that with us. <laughs> well, the reason that it affects me so much is that I have had the benefit of being supported in that... My wife died some three years ago, so the support I got was beyond belief. But I do apologise for becoming emotional. It's, uh, you know. Well, I think right. that is so lovely. And that, thanks for sharing that with him. I hope we haven't upset you too much. But no, no. That's a beautiful thing. That's obviously why the Masons mean so much to you. That's right. That it's yeah, that support that's right. and that feeling of belonging to some part of a yeah. community. I've been a member for 27 years and was welcomed in day one and as uh, I've been I've been you comfortable within the built yeah from oh. that day yeah but you were saying as well that it's an inclusive society and I was really interested you were telling us about there's a copy of the bible but you were saying that in terms of inclusivity it doesn't matter what religion you are or what race doesn't matter what color creed religion uh all are welcome the the only um the only way you can't get in is if you don't have a supreme if you don't have a belief in a supreme oh, okay. being in other words it doesn't matter what you how you refer to god as long as you do have a belief that's the important thing and the other thing as well of course is we, we wouldn't actually invite somebody to join who had a, um, a criminal record a serious criminal record there are stories that one of the Cray twins was a member actually but really? uh, I don't think he was a member for long not a record <laughs> gosh so can you tell us a bit more about some of the wonderful things in this room I'm looking at this wonderful desk is that the right word plinth or <laughs> well <laughs> uh, yes the at this particular one that's where the junior warden sits right the worshipful master sits in that one in that chair there and the senior warden sits in that chair there and they are effectively the worshipful masters to right and left hand, basically. Oh, okay. He, the that Worshipful Master is the chairman and runs the meeting, and they're his two assistants. Right. They're there to keep order in the lodge. It, one of the interesting things when you become a member is that when the Worshipful Master strikes the gavel, it's followed by the senior warden and then the junior warden, and there is dead silence. Wow. Instant. Nice. So it's, it teaches obedience as well, of course. I bet that's quite a moment. When it yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'd been coming in this room for oh, three, four years and hadn't noticed the four tassels in the corner. 
I had them pointed out to me. And they represent the four cardinal virtues, which are prudence, temperance, fortitude, and justice. Gosh, so they're real sort of cornerstones, if you like, That's of the right. Masonic beliefs. That's right, yeah. What about this? There's a stone here. What's well, this, this interesting is rock about? This is what we call an ashlar. And this is the rough ashlar. And what it represents is a young man at the start of his Masonic career. He's reasonably square, reasonably honest, but a bit rough around the edges. They've never managed to knock all the rough edges off me, if I tell you the <laughs> truth. And what we attempt to do, what we as an organisation attempt to do, is to, to turn that, that young man into a perfect ashlar, which is the one that you see hanging from the crane there. <clears throat> oh, wow. So it's basically, it's taking a rough, un, un, unshaped man and making him into That's right. an upstanding... It's taking a good man and making him better, basically. Wow. Yeah. Why, why is this Ashtar on this um, sort of... Well, I, I really did... Uh, hope you wouldn't ask me that oh, sorry. because that's about the only thing I don't know in the room. Ah! Uh, <laughs> the, I, I suspect it is just a way of uh, exhibiting a perfect ashlar. Right. What I do know is that the the way that the um, the hook, the, the the lifting device, is held in there is by three brass wedges and that's um, that's called a Lewis and the son of a Freemason is always referred to as a Lewis. A Lewis? Yeah okay. and he, if he applied to join, if two men applied to join and one of them was the son of a Freemason then he would in fact um, get preferential treatment and that's about just about the only uh, preferential treatment you would get as a Freemason. Ah, something else I've just noticed. There's a, like a candlestick with, is that a globe on the end? Here? It is, yeah. It's, um, I can't remember which one is which, but one is a um, celestial globe ah. and the other is a terrestrial globe. And uh, because Everything under the heavens and all over, and Freemasonry is, of course, all over the surface of the world because uh, um, there are Freemasons' lodges in every country in the world, including Russia now, and wow. they were closed down for a long time. Yeah, gosh, that's exciting, isn't it? Mm. So, why is one lying down and one standing up? When uh, the lodge is opened, officially, there is a small t ceremony takes place to open the lodge, and uh, <clears throat> on completion, the senior warden lifts that to show that the lodge is open for business, right. and the junior warden puts that one down <coughs> for the same reason. Oh. Now, the junior warden is ostensibly the steward of the lodge, mm -hmm. so should we decide to... Um, I don't know, go upstairs for a, a drink or a cup of tea or something like that in the middle of the meeting, the junior warden would actually call the lodge to order, put that column down, we would go out, have a cup of tea, right. come back, then he would declare the lodge open again, lift the column and again, or rather lay the column down and, uh, um, and we would carry on with the lodge business. So it's a sort of open... That's right, that's system. right. Gosh. Yeah. And what are these lovely things that I see on these chairs? Ah, <clears throat> well, I think everybody knows that Freemasons wear an apron. Mm -hmm. When you join, you become a, an entered apprentice Freemason and you would wear that one, that apron. When you became a fellow craft, you would wear the next one. When you became a master mason, you would wear that one. And once you became the worshipful master of the lodge, you then ch change that apron to one with the 
the the levels on the front. Oh right. Oh, so they're like like spirit levels, or that's right. Right. Okay. Yeah. And what about these really ornate ones as you go? Well, up? when you've been through the chair about five six years after you've been through the chair, you are invited by the provincial grand master to become a provincial officer. In other words, uh, um, an officer of provincial grand lodge. And. Uh, and then you change from a, a light blue to a dark blue and the whole apron becomes a lot more on, ornate. Right. And this, this one's really pretty. It's, it it's is. Rainbow yeah. colours. And it looks like it's got some age to it as well. Well, both those are, well, in fact, all three of those are old, very old second hand aprons that I only use them as uh, exhibits right. when, the, when I open the hall oh. and have people round. Right. This is um, Royal Arch Mariners and that's a side order because there are lots of side orders right. in Freemasonry. That's Royal Arch Mariners and that the ceremony for that particular side order revolves around um, uh, the building of the Ark and uh, Noah and the Great Flood. So all your ceremonies and um, sessions that you have, they're all, is it ritual? What actually kind of happens in a, a Mason's meeting? Well, there is a, a, a proper parade in to music. The Worshipful Master is escorted to his chair. And then there is a small ceremony, just a, um, a small official ceremony takes place to actually open the lodge and uh, conduct the lodge's business. At some point during the lodge's business, we will um, enact a ceremony. It could be a first degree ceremony for an entered apprentice, a second degree ceremony for a fellow craft, or a third degree ceremony for a master mason. And um, whichever ceremony we decided to, to perform on that particular evening, that would take place. So um, a fellow craft Freemason, for example, would move up to being a master mason, and then the lodge would um, be officially closed, another small ceremony, the lodge would be officially closed, and then there would be a parade out. And all this would take, well, perhaps just a little over an hour, an hour and a quarter, sometimes an hour and a half, depending on the length of the ceremony, because each of the ceremonies takes a slightly different length of time. Oh, right. So the Masons, I understand the Masons do a lot of charitable work and, and do a lot of charitable donations as well. Could you tell me some about those? Year before last, Nottinghamshire Freemasons donated £150,000 wow. to, uh, to, to national and local charities. Uh, £20,000 to Bluebell Wood. Uh, Twenty thousand pound to Knox Domestic Abuse Service. Um, in two thousand and seventeen, the Freemasons of Bassett Law—that's just the, um, the no, the Nottinghamshire Masons. That's right. Completed what we call um, a festival, which takes place over uh, about a period of six years, and uh, we attempted to raise uh, three million pounds. And we failed. Oh, <laughs> we failed, target, but not by much. <laughs> we managed to raise 2.6 million, which That's which isn't bad. And and, um, and what you have to bear in mind is that uh, that all the money comes from Freemasons and their families and friends. Is mm. you know we don't. It's not from the general public yeah. at all. Yeah. And. Um, <clears throat> In 2018, the Masons throughout the country raised uh, £48 million. So the numbers are, are mind-blowing, really. But as I said earlier, that, that is only a side issue. The object of the organisation is to improve uh, men's character, really. And... Uh, well. Sorry, I'm getting a bit lost there again. But uh, I think it works. I do. I really well, it's think obviously it works. worked on you. You're oh, a lovely gentleman. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. So, as I say, 
you know, if the, and if the, it is not a secret society. It really isn't a secret society. If, you, uh, if anybody wants to know anything at all, they only have to give me a ring. Oh. And of course, uh, I open the hall on uh, Charter Day in May and Heritage Day yeah. in September. And anybody can come along and have a look. Well, thankfully, thank you so much for giving us this virtual talk this year. Obviously, because of the situation, we're not having a real yeah. Heritage Open Day. It is all going to be online. But I'm sure next year, fingers crossed, when things are a bit more back to normal, that after this taster and your fantastic wealth of information, <laughs> I think <laughs> next year on Heritage Open Day <clears throat> and Charter Day, which is on May the 3rd next year, I'm sure they will be queuing down the street to come and have a look around your <laughs> Bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you very temple. much. Thank you ever so much yeah. for showing us around. No, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank, Thank you. Really. you. Mm.